Whoa. Good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene here. Early in the morning, and I'm going to tell you straight to the point, I want to do a little more fly fishing for bluegill and shell cracker. Um, the last few days, there's been a lot of fronts coming in, The and it's been extremely cold. In fact, one morning it frosted. Um, it's starting to warm up now. So... The fish should be coming in pretty heavy. I'm going to be looking for bluegill and shell cracker beds. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. This is a popper. And I have a connection of about a foot. And on the end of it, I have a weighted nymph. It sinks very slow. It's just barely weighted. It's not a dry fly. This little nymph right here is responsible for catching probably 90% of the fish that bites. That's just an estimation. Uh, from the first time I went. But every once in a while, a good one to come up there and get that popper. And I think it's possible to catch two at once. I'm pretty sure of it. If you get on the right bed, yeah, it could happen. But when they come up here, when they hit that popper, which I love to see them do it, they'll just rise up there at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, and look at it and just <clears throat> grab it like that. It's a beautiful strike. It really is. Um, I need to practice. I've been out here in the yard practicing with my fly rod, but that don't give it justice. When you're on the water, it's a lot different because the correct way to set a hook uh, on a fly rod is hold your rod tip low to the water, use this finger, and hold your fly line and strip it. Then when you stop it, when you do get a strike, Pull the slack out to the fish and then raise up on the fish. That's the correct way to do it. But when you're on the water in the heat of the moment when you get that strike, it's hard to follow suit with that, folks, if you're a beginner. But that's the kind of stuff I'm going to have to master. Not just that, but a lot of different things. Um, fly fishing is pretty complicated. There's a lot to it that I don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to know, but I do know fishing for bluegill and shellcracker is an easy way to start off um, to get the basics. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. So come with me, whoa, and let's see what we can do on the water. I can't do it here. We got to do it on the water. Let's go. All righty, folks. I'm here at the ramp right here. It's pretty windy. And uh, I believe I, I believe I'll be okay putting in right here. I'm here. I'm gonna fish with my little boat, and I'm gonna show it to you. It's one that I made into a fishing boat. It's just a, a cheap aluminum lightweight flat bottom boat, which is perfect for getting up in this shallow water looking for these bluegill and shell crack. Now what I have right here, which I've showed before, is a 20 horse Mercury 2011 model. Um, four stroke very quiet motor easy to start and I just got a three gallon gas tank there it'll run you across the world just with that three gallon right there real economical now I put all this green carpet in here in 2011 it's uh, nothing more than a tracker topper th uh, 15, 15 foot boat and it's real low to the water. It's a great little boat for crappie, a matter of fact. Skipping under docks because it's real low profile. If you can pick the right day, of course, where it's not real windy, it is made to order for that kind of fishing too. And on it, I got a, a Minn Kota 45 pound thrust trolling motor, which for this boat right here, it will ski this boat, folks. And of course, right here, it's a tilt tiller. And I have an extension on the handle right here. So it's just right, right here. Now it's just 15 foot long, but with one person in it, you got plenty of room. I mean, you got more room in it than you do fishing out of a 20 foot um, Ranger bass boat with two people in it. There's just plenty of room for one person. Um, and I got a little depth finder right here. Now I built this deck and all myself this is half inch marine plywood and i have some aluminum struts i have one on each side and i have one right here 
and one on the other side of this little hatch I built. So it's not fancy at all right here, but it's a good little fishing boat. It'll get up there in inches of water. And I've just got a little Hummingbird 561 fish finder on it, which are good fish finders, real good. So there's my deal right there. That's all they are to it. This is my storage right here, which I have the battery up front. And because of that, it's not good to jar a battery. I just take my time. When you have waves like this, I just take my time. When I get through them on flat water, I can go on. But you don't want a lot of jarring going on when you have a battery. But it was a good place to stow it. And I also have lights on this. I've rigged up lights. And um, here's a couple rod holders I have right here fishing for catfish so yeah it's a it's a, just a fishing boat but it, it gets the job done it's pretty old but I've taken care of it I've really taken care of it good okay we're gonna go on out here we're gonna get through this rough water right here and then I'm gonna find some areas it's not so rough back up on flats we're gonna look for bluegill and shellcracker beds and we'll check, also check the water temperature and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's do it. Woo! Mm. I'll just leave that rope right there for now until I get out of this shallow water. It's pretty rough out here, folks, for a little boat like this, but uh, we're going to find us some slack water somewhere. Woo! Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, folks, I'm back up in here where it's not windy right now, not windy at all. And uh, what I'm gonna do, of course, is get up here real shallow and I'm gonna be looking for beds. Um, so far, I've seen some carp and that's about all. It is full of carp right down through here and the water's real, real shallow. So, I'm gonna get past this tree right here. That's a pretty tree, ain't it? My, 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 my. But I'm gonna visually look for some, some beds. And I'll show you what I'm gonna be fishing with today. This is a eight foot six NXT series fly rod right here. It's four piece and the weight is four slash five weight. Uh, four piece rod. Now, as far as terminology, I don't really understand what, what happened right here. I've seen something go on right here. I don't understand all the terminology. Let's see what we have. NX Series Reel, which came on it as a combination. Here's the drag system right here. And I don't have it set right here. I could tighten it up just a little bit. Something like that. Oh, uh, let's see what else. Let me show y'all this. Now, this is called a nail knot right here. And um, I tie it with my hands. You can get a toe for that, but it's a real simple knot to tie, and I can tie it with my hands. And uh, let's see right here. Here's my little combination right here. It's a popper with about a foot a liter and a sinking, a sinking nymph. Well, and that's probably about a size 12 hook. It's real, real tiny right there. And that's how I'm set up. All my connections are trilene knots. In other words, I've got a trilene knot here. I have one here at the hook. And then I have one on my nymph. Trilene knots. I have a lot of confidence in that knot and the palomar knot the water's not real clear and it's because we've had a lot of wind here lately so this bank right here is probably being blown out by the wind especially a couple days ago but still i'm going to be looking for activity along the bank um being the water's dingy i'm going to look for movement of any type and I'm going to be looking for beds. 
and muddy spots being the water is real dingy like it is but let's get in here and see if we can catch one let's, first we're gonna have to find a bed look here oh my my what do we got here folks could that be an overgrown shellcracker fish or what or just a big old bluegill. My goodness. Now that one's giving me a fit right here. Oh my, 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 my. Get out of that grass. Look here. Now this is a pretty fish right here. Let's see if we can. Oh man, that's all I could do to do that. Look at there. Now that's a doggone big one. That's a man. Way bigger than my hand. Hit that little bitty nymph. That's the kind of fish I've been looking for. Right there. That is a big one. And that's crossed between a bluegill, northern strain bluegill, and red ear sunfish. Guarantee you that. Let's let him go right here. I just want to scream, but I can't. That guy on the dock here. Messing with them old dogs. He'll think I'm nuts out here, folks. A doo 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 and a scooby dooby doo. Love that good old woman. Yes, I do. Look here. They. That's a good one. I'm going to put it back in there. I can't stand that. That was a darn good one, now. I got you, though, didn't I? I got a little one. I got the baby, not the big one. He might be the baby, but he mean. Come in here, boy. I do, 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 do. -do. A scooby doo bed doo bed doo A scrappy dappy scooby doo Look at here. Let's get him on the reel. That's a pretty good shell cracker. Or I think he is. Yeah. That's a bluegill. Look here, folks. Two at one time. I was told that could happen. <laughs> one hit the popper, one hit the nymph. Ain't that something? I believe I'm on the bluegill bed, don't y'all? If I had three on there, I could probably caught three, couldn't I? Now the ideal is to keep your rod just a few inches off the water, folks, and just use this finger or either one, whichever finger you're comfortable with, and just strip to you little movements like that and whatever uh, that popper's doing that nymph is doing too except for one's on the surface and one slightly below the surface see what we got right here yep got us a little shell crackers what we got look at there That's a pretty fish right there. Quit, quit. And there's a bunch of them in here. I mean, it's eat up with them. But what had happened <laughs> is a bunch, a big bunch of carp went right through the middle of that bed. So it's gonna take a while for this water to get back clear enough for them to bat. But there's a lot of them right here in front of me. Quit. Golly, bum, I'm excited. And he hit that nymph. And he swallowed it, so we're going to have to get him loosed. And I believe it's nothing more than a big shell cracker bed. And if that's the case, there'll be some big ones on here. That one there's, a, yeah, he's big enough to eat if he's hungry, but let's let him go. I ain't that hungry right now. I'm so excited, I cannot help it. 
I cannot hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. There we go. He's on the reel right here. That one ain't fighting like a shell cracker, it's fighting like a bluegill. It is, it's a big old bluegill. Look at here. Look at here, look at here. That's the kind I like to catch right there. Big as your hand. My, my, my. Look at there. But I got an idea. There's some big crackers in, in there. I love to catch them. I like to catch them both, but especially shell crackers. There we go. Now that didn't take long at all. Now evidently this is a little better fish, folks, than what I've been catching. Let's see what we got. Or he just meaner one. No, it's a better fish right here. A little better. Yep. Look at there. He don't know what he wants to do. He's just going to go around in circles. But look at here. What a shell cracker. That's what I've been wanting to catch right there. That's beautiful. That's a field and stream shot if I ever seen one. No doubt. Barely got that fly in his little mouth. See that? Now that fish right there is undamaged. And I'm gonna let him back. Let's let him go right here. We'll watch this and swim off. That's a little bit more of what I want to catch right here. That's a beautiful fish. Of course, I like to catch them all. There he goes. He's mad. They stay mad this time of the year. I'm supposed to keep my tip like this, real low. When I get bit, strip the line to you and raise the rod up at the same time and you, and you got him, but not hard, you know. These little hooks are needle sharp. So it don't take us, we're not bass fishing right here. Now I have to keep reminding myself that, folks. By me wanting to catch these fish, I'm getting pretty good at throwing this. Just because I, there he is. Because I want to catch him, you see. You kind of feel uh, helpless with a fly rod. I believe this is a bluegill right here because they're so limber. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. Now, let's don't reel our fly line into that. No, it's just a female shell cracker that is sure enough I'm gonna break the law right here a little bit let's just do this now that's pretty that's the female though that's the one that's laying the eggs folks now notice how her fins are not black and she's not peeing so that's the female let's let that pretty thing go she's a darling mm -mm. Yeah, you are. Go on back, gal. Make us more of them shell dad ass. Woo. Woo. And I'm getting a lot of little bitty moths like that on there. I'm making sure that it's free of that before I make another cast. Because that'll hinder you from getting a bite. All that little stuff has got to come off. Let's catch another one. It bite better when the sun's out. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. 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 Look at there. Look at there. Look at that. Woo. 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 Okay. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting me live another day. I love this. Now, there ain't no doubt about it. Look at there. I don't care if they're that big or that big or that big or that big. It don't make nair bit of difference to Richard Gene the fishing machine. 
I'm about catching them. Whoa. Whoa. Now I'm going to have to sit down. That exhausted me. That was too much adrenaline. And remember, go be when you can, because it's good.